OpenAI has just released their first AI agent called the operator. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. But first of all, this is a computer using agent currently available on the $200 per month pro subscription and only available to people in the US right now. OpenAI plans to broaden this to open it to new countries and also to other tiers like the plus team and enterprise plan. How it works is that instead of controlling your computer, it opens up a new remote browser and the operator can see what's on the screen by taking screenshots. It can interact with it via a keyboard and a mouse. So just like what a normal human would be able to see and do with a browser open. It also has the capability to access password protected sites where maybe you already have a membership or you're logged in, you have your data saved. But in order to log in, what operator is going to ask for is for you to take control. In that time, it's not going to take screenshots. It's not going to look at your password. So you take control, you type in your login credentials, and then you can give the access back to the operator. It also asks for your help with payment information and solving captures as well. You can also add custom instructions. For example, if you have a preferred diet and you want it to always be able to find you those kinds of restaurants or shop that kind of groceries, or you have preferred websites to use for certain tasks, or you have preferred airlines and so on. And you can also save your prompts for the tasks so you can just run them again and again. All right, so let's see how it works. One of the first things that I tried yesterday is I asked it to find a video editor for me that can edit uh, YouTube videos for me and create shorts from it. And then first it kind of made a mistake because it, it looked for a shorts maker software subscription instead of a person, but that's kind of on me because I didn't specify that in the prompt. So even now with all of these tools being really sophisticated, it seems like they're writing prompts really well and being clear on your communication, just like how it's important talking to humans, it's also important still talking to machines. So you cannot really get around being clear and they are not mind readers yet. And it also made the mistake of like, not asking like a clarifying question, like, are you looking for a human or a software? So then I gave it some feedback, like, no, I want like a person I can hire that will take my raw video clips and create videos from it. And then it, it opened up Fiverr, which was actually a really good decision and tried to look for editors. And then it found one that would charge me $690 an hour. And I said, okay, both of you to assume that I can afford a $690 hourly rate. And I, and they said, I understand that it's, it might be too much. Would you like me to look for more affordable video editors? And I said, yes. And it went around it. This was really interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have this recorded, but it went around on the fibers page. It scrolled up and down and then it, it figured out where the fill filters are because those are like kind of hidden and we got to a point where uh, I would have to log in and this is when I was like okay I'm not going to do that I just wanted to try it. Most of the public demos by OpenAI were for normal like daily use cases and you know things like ordering food or like ordering pizza, groceries, buying tickets for a basketball match and I think those are really good and important use cases. However, I really want to focus on the business use cases to do tasks that are similar to what we do at work. And I think the main reason they kind of don't do that in the demos, even though they know the software is capable, is because they don't want to scare people that they're going to lose their jobs. So now we are not bound by any kind of uh, PR um, you know, safeguards that we have certain things to say and not to say. So now we can really focus on like how this operator is going to transform businesses and uh, make human work maybe a little bit different, I should say, not necessarily replace it. But what I see is that a lot of people will, instead of being the operator themselves, they will just move a level higher and they will be managing these little operator agents and then they can do a lot, lot of tasks simultaneously. And all they will do is just give feedback to, to the operators. So they will be just managing the AIs, increasing human output, because that way one person can do a lot more tasks. 
uh, decreasing cost for services and products, which could benefit you know everybody. And I think there there are going to be a lot of uh, new jobs appearing where people who know how to use these AI tools will have massive opportunities going into companies and helping them find new solutions. Okay, one idea that I have is it would be good to have like a summary of what's going on with operator, what this is, and then write a marketing email and then just put it into a marketing software and schedule it. So let's give that one a try. Okay, so the task I'm giving it now is browse what operator by OpenAI is and then write a marketing email for my entrepreneur audience, giving them a quick overview and prompting them to click the link to watch my full review. Write the email in kit.com, which is the email marketing software that I use and don't send it. So now you can see that it's thinking, it's searching for operator by OpenAI. As you can see here in the steps, it's showing us what kind of thinking steps it's going through and it opened a browser that I can also open in like full view. So here then on the left side, we, we have the chat history and on the right side, we have this display and it's searching for articles, exploring news and open AI's operator right now. And I could just, you know, leave it as is, open a new tab, do some other stuff. And then I, I can just come back to it and, and see how, how far it's gotten. Right now, I'm just gonna watch we'll cut out part parts where i'm not talking and we'll see uh, how that works it looks like it's going into some errors right now being services not being uh, available so it's going to close that tab actually really good reasoning and uh, it's looking for alternatives so now as you can see it's opening some articles and it's gathering details for the marketing email which is actually pretty cool oh it, it's actually opening up kit right now so i'm gonna have to use my password to log in as for passwords, now it's going to ask me, as you can see, to log in. So now I'm going to log in to the software, do the verification, the other, any, any other email that I need to, you know, like verification email, and then I'm going to give it back access. Okay, so one of the challenges that I'm facing now, I've done a couple minutes back and forth, is that now to log into the email marketing software, I also need to check my email on this device and click one of the buttons to log into Kit. So I'll try to figure out a way to do that. Okay, so we just logged in. The way to overcome that was that I went to my email. I didn't want to log into my email as well on this device. So I went to my email and I copied the link that I had to do to use and then I put it in here in a new tab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give back the control to operator and see what happens. So I also told the operator that I logged in just to make sure it understands what's going on. I'm ready to pause it and to take control anytime because I really don't want it to mess things up. I have to be really careful here. Create a new. Let's see if it picks broadcast. Did it succeed? Oh my God, there we go. It's creating the draft broadcast. It has the AI newsletter template as well. It's selecting the subject line. Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the subject line is not really uh, email marketing friendly. Don't delete the, that part. Oh my God. Okay. It deleted the, the pre-made thing. Okay. No, don't continue. So something that I need that, that happened here is whenever it tried to paste, ConvertKit is asking for confirmation on the pasting. And it's like whether you want to use the markdown format or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it back access and I'm going to tell it to like use the formatting. So I said, I went back to the editor when the pop-up for pasting pops up, just use the yes format button. Oh, there we go. Okay. So one note here, very interesting. I just have to give it better instructions. Maybe I have to set up the template that way that it can just put it in there. Uh, there is a certain part where I say enter your your text here, dear operator, and then it can select only that part. It can keep the heading, which is like the personalization, like, hey, Dave, and then the bottom where it's like my photo and that kind of stuff. This is fascinating. I'm going to say I just scrolled. Uh, now add a PS that this email was sent by the operator. This is amazing. Oh my God. And here's the thing. 
usually like doing this, like scheduling the email, it, it usually takes me roughly 10 to 15 minutes, but it's, it's, it's such a pain in the ass to, to kind of do, but it's also difficult to, to delegate to my assistant because we work async. So if I were to say like, Hey, here's the text, please schedule it. Sometimes I just, I just write an email and I want it to be sent out instantly. And even that friction of a couple of hours when my assistant gets the time to, to do that task, it's, it's, uh, it's too much friction sometimes. So I just usually do it by myself, but with the operator, if it can do it like this, uh, this is, this is going to be interesting. So I can now save the task. I can open a new conversation and just say, Hey, here's the email that I've written, send it out to my subscribers. And then I, let's see next step that I want to give it is let's see if it can send it out to uh, certain segments in, in the email uh, system. Okay. So I set it, the draft is saved automatically. Click on continue and let's look at the schedule settings, but be very careful not to click the send button. Oh, it did select the send email. Might be very careful to not send the broadcast right now. Yeah. Oh. Operator visited www.msn.com, which seems unrelated to your task. Please confirm that you want operator to continue to this website. Keep paused. No, don't look at MSN. I'm going to ask it to schedule it to go out at 3 p.m. my time. Currently it's 12, 16. I don't know what the time zone is for, for the operator. So we'll see. Scheduling also gives me an option to come back manually, change the subject line, add the link and so on. So, so I, I tell it to you that I went back to editing, schedule the email to go out at 3 PM my time, which is 9 AM EST. I'm saying I went back to the sending settings. And let's see if it can figure out to change the send now from, from that to. Okay. So in this part, the operator seemed to make a lot of mistakes and it was really difficult for it to pick the date and time accurately. But at the end of it, with a lot of assistance and back and forth, it did figure it out, but I wanted to speed this up for you. Okay. There's something very interesting that happened here because the, the timing display the date and time selector was like on the bottom or the top left of the display and it couldn't really find a 1 p.m it just kept scrolling over or under it and now it uh went back it says like okay let's let's try to do it again so it's actually really good at kind of like adjusting for its own uh, mistakes and and behavior so let's see if it can find a 1 p.m now yeah again it scrolls through a little bit too much and yeah, when it wants to scroll up, then it just scrolls the whole display. Uh, it's a little bit, I'm just going to let it handle it. But uh, th these are the kind of things it's like it's research preview. So still needs to, to do stuff. There we go. You can do it. I know you can do it. There we go. There's the 1 PM. I know you can do it operator. Come on, double click. No, you have to double click it. Closing time selector. It did close the time selector and we don't know. Okay. Let's take control and let's see what it scheduled it for. There we go. It's scheduled it for 1 PM GMT plus one. So this way I can just go and, and uh, change things later up. This is, this is perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to say, continue with the scheduling. Very good. Very well done. It's asking for another confirmation. Like, should I proceed to schedule the broadcast? And I will say yes. The email has been scheduled successfully for January 25th at 1 PM GMT plus one. If you need any further adjustments or assistance, just let me know. So I think we successfully completed this task. I need to do some human in the loop interaction to add the link to the video into the email. But other than that, I'm very satisfied with how this turned out in terms of the time it would take. I'm right now roughly 25, 30 minutes into the, uh, doing this task part of the recording. So we cut out a lot of breaks and 
at the end of it, it's probably gonna take the same time as it would take me to just do it myself. But again, research preview and, and doing this, I'm, I'm highly uh, satisfied with this. And I know that in the future, this is gonna get a lot faster. It's gonna be able to make decisions better. And we're also gonna be able to run multiple tasks in like multiple threads at the same time. Okay, so now that we're done, we can also click the save task button, which will open up this little window. And here we can give it a title, what the task is, and we can uh, put in the detailed instructions and we can enter the website. So in this case, I could enter that I wanted to use kit.com. And here, instead of generating the marketing email, I'm just gonna say uh, schedule and send marketing emails. And then I could put in a little more detailed instructions. If you have a standard operating procedure that you used to train the, your team members, then you can just kind of give those instructions here. I have a big document on how we go about scheduling and sending emails. How do we select each uh, segment? So I'm going to put more time into this and put these tasks together. There's going to be an update video on how I'm using operator a couple of weeks and months down the line. For me, this is as getting access to this in the research preview on the pro plan. As an AI educator, this is worth it for me for 200 bucks. For others who are just uh, trying to use it for tasks, right now it's probably still not, the, not at the state where you are actually gonna see a lot of time improvement for your tasks that it's worth the $200 per month subscription right now. Probably in the future, in the next couple months, if this gets faster, if it gets better, then definitely it's going to be something that's uh, worth the money. There is something that I wanted to show you, which is the benchmark score for the OpenAI operator versus other agents versus humans. So here are a couple of benchmarks that we have computer use and browser use. And what you can like, what's important here to look at is first of all, the human scores. As you can see, 70, 72% on the computer use and 78% on the browser use. Whereas the OpenAI CUA, which is the computer using agent, in, in Web Arena, it performed at 58.1%. So versus the human 78.2%, you can see that it still makes mistakes. As you could see with the scheduling, it kind of uh, didn't find that time picking. So if I didn't give it like back a little back and forth, it probably could have failed that. And first it actually failed it. So, so again, the, like once this score goes above or very close to the human score, then the $200 per month plan is going to be a no brainer. And I think that's where this direction is, is heading. And you can see the previous uh, state of the art for computer use was, uh, so uh, thirty six percent, and then with web browsing uh, agents, it was fifty seven. So we are roughly at the same uh, here. I highly recommend you go to OpenAI's website and look at these other uh, use cases that they did. Because, for example, there is one that handles a refund for a market, and you can see the thinking steps and finding customers, updating licenses, and so on. So, and it's like a lot of other stuff. That, that goes on here, very good uh, use cases to give you inspiration and you, know, you can just dive deeper. I think it's really important to keep yourself up to date. I wanted to keep this video short and I do longer trainings in my paid community. So if you're interested in staying up to date with AI and making AI work for you for business use cases, then check out the community. You can find the link in the description and subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh.